My name is Jeremy France. I am an operations manager for an aerospace manufacturing facility here in Laconia, New Hampshire. Born and raised in Westboro, Massachusetts. Moved up here about nine years ago and just love living in the woods and, and being at peace. I spent the first three quarters of my life internally battling with who I was and, and, and uh, you know, dealt with crippling fears, doubts, and insecurities. And I never really knew why. Growing up, I was uh, brought up in a, in a wonderful home and, and in a wonderful area of Massachusetts, and uh, you know had everything that you know that I ever needed. For whatever reason, I just was never satisfied. I, I always needed more, and I always needed to look at others and and what they had, and 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 I spent a lot of time uh, dwelling on on the fact that. Um, what they had was better than what I had and, and how they felt was better than how I felt and, and what they looked like was better than what I looked like. That was mostly internalized. On the outside, I looked, um, you know, as well adjusted as anybody would be. I was, uh, you know, socially accepted. Um, I was outgoing and, um, you know, I, I never really let on that there was ever an issue. And, I, and, I, and a part of me never really knew there was an issue until I got a little bit older into my teenage years. And, and once, I, uh, once I started um, doing things in, in, in my teenage years, like you know, going, you know, going out and partying as, instead of uh, you know, concentrating on schoolwork or athletics, um, things quickly started to escalate um, you know, without my permission. And, uh, you know, to fast forward a little, a little ways, um, you know, by the time I was in my 20s, um, things were really spiraling out of control and, uh, and I started to experience things like depression and anxiety um, and, and a level of fear that I had never experienced before. And, and when, that, when that occurred, um, you know, I, I started to, to, to live in pain and for me, um, you know, it just got to a point where the pain was unbearable and you start to give up. And, uh, and that's an empty feeling, it's a scary and dark place to be. And, you know, the, the circumstances that, that occurred were, were vast and, and they were frightening. When you have that feeling of less than and you have that feeling of, um, of, of complete worthlessness, um, you just see, it just seems like there's just no way out and uh, not knowing that there was a solution to, to what was what was what was wrong with me um, you know I, I I just kept falling deeper and deeper and uh, eventually you know I, I had an, an opportunity um, that came about just because it came about and uh, you know, for for the first time in my life, I was I was able to um, to out loud speak up and ask for help, and and that was the hardest thing that I ever had to do because that fear um, was just was just too powerful, and and I didn't want people to know that I needed help, and and I didn't want um, people to know that I wasn't able to take care of myself. I was either going to die or I was going to um, you know at least have a, 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 an ounce of willingness to, to change and try a different, try a different way. Because I had been trying my own way for so long. I was driving the bus my whole life and every time I got to a fork in the road, it seemed that I took the wrong turn. And the day I decided to throw the keys away and, 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 uh, and, and let somebody else, you know, drive the bus, that was the first day that I felt salvation. And, uh, you know, I had an opportunity to move up here to New Hampshire, get the help that I needed, and uh, I live a life today that I didn't know existed. Um, I live a life today that I know is limitless. I live a life today that um, when I do what I'm supposed to do on a daily basis and I make sure that I'm spending time loving outside of myself, knowing others need it more, um, it, it's a day of satisfaction and it's, and it's, and it's a day of fulfillment, you know, for, for my father to, to tell me that, um, he's proud of me. It's, uh, 
you know that's that's better than any 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 song I've ever heard on the radio or any any landscape that I've ever um, had an opportunity to photograph. You know when I started running um, about a year ago, I was I was able to 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 tap into a, a, a totally new um, feeling of of peace and 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 meditation that again I didn't know existed and I'm, I'm afforded these opportunities because of what I do on a daily basis to maintain uh, my health not only mentally but spiritually and physically and uh, you know I never set out to be a marathon runner folks that are closest to me you know they, they laugh and we joke about you know about Forrest Gump and, and how he just started running it. But, but that's the, the truth of it. I just got up and I started running and the next thing I know I'm running three miles and five miles and then eight miles and then 10 miles. And a, a good friend of mine said, hey, you know, I'm running New York. I'm running for the New York Roadrunners um, and a charity called The Run For Kids. And, and you have, uh, you know, an opportunity to raise some money for some kids in need. And, uh, and that started just an absolute, um, new way of thinking um, when it comes to reflecting back in my childhood and how I never really wanted for for anything when it came to athletics. I didn't have to worry about where the equipment was coming from. I didn't have to worry about having coaches and, and trainers that were experienced in, in uh, you know, in mentoring young, young kids. Um, and it got me thinking that all these all these kids out there that just don't have that opportunity and I wanted to be able to be a small part of, of, of being able to provide that that for them and in the meantime I'm running mile after mile and feeling better and better about myself um, and, and why I'm doing it and you get to a point where you know y y your feet aren't even hitting the ground you're just kind of floating and you're going and uh, you know I'm blessed to for whatever reason to have you know enough endurance to, to keep that up and keep it going and growing up 10 miles from the start line it's just been always always been you know a dream to run Boston and those dreams faded, you know, as, as my life started to take a turn in a different direction, but that spark was still there and, and, and I reached out to a couple people that um, I knew had run uh, Boston before and, and they got me hooked up with, um, with a wonderful woman, Susan Hurley, who, who, uh, who then in, it got me in touch with the Pedro Martinez Foundation. And, and I was just blown away just even at the thought of, of being affiliated with, with, with Pedro and his wife's foundation and, and what that would mean not only to me but to, to my network of, of, of family and friends and, and also what I could do um, you know, to help that foundation um, you know, raise money for kids not only locally but around the world and uh, to represent Pedro Martinez and, and his wife Carolina um, is just a dream come true. Growing up, um, an avid Red Sox fan, you know, my father had season tickets to the Sox. I spent so many days um, in that park, and, and when Pedro came to the Red Sox, um, you know, it was it was a godsend. And you know, I looked at Pedro um, and just admired him for so many different reasons. Being a guy of, of smaller stature like myself, I loved his fearlessness, and and it, and I could relate to it. Um, you know. When I grew up playing sports, um, especially you know playing hockey, I, I certainly wasn't the biggest guy on the ice, but there wasn't anybody there that I was afraid of. And uh, you know, athletes and, and men like Pedro Martinez, um, you know, they just set such such an amazing example of of not only hard work and training, uh, but also knowing the, knowing the mental aspect of, of athletics and and how he would outthink. Um, you know the opposing batter and what he would do what what his pitch selection was for each and every uh, opponent that he had um, You know, I have so many amazing memories of, of not only watching Pedro live um, But also, you know the run in 2004 was up at, at that point in my life one of the greatest experiences um, You know that I've ever had I, I bring people uh, Upstairs and, and, and put on the, um, the the 2004 Faith Rewarded DVD because there's a, a scene in that in that um, amazing movie where after the World Series is over and their and their parade um, was going through the streets of Boston, I was fortunate enough to be in one of the buildings uh, 
right next to FAO Schwartz um, in the McGraw Hill Publishing Building and the camera actually zooms in on me hanging out of the window while Pedro was going by and you know the the, the video is grainy but if, if you look close enough you can see the tears in my eyes and, and uh, you know the amount of uh, the amount of pride that 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 brought to Boston and, and just all the memories that you know it brought up from from me being a kid going to the Fenway with my father and and uh, you know what it did for the city at the time and you know you fast forward 15 16 years and all the championships that we've been able to uh, to be a part of it's just amazing being a part of, of of the Pedro Martinez Foundation for the marathon um, just gives me that 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 one more inch of edge um, you know that that I'm gonna need not only to raise the funds necessary but but to get across that finish line and and I know that you know when 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 things get tough you know mile 16 mile 17 and then your mind's playing tricks on you I'm gonna have an opportunity to look down on my jersey and see Pedro Martinez's name and, and know that you know I just got to dig a little bit deeper and I just got to grind a little bit more I try not to envision crossing that finish line because I don't want to I don't want to set expectations that I'm not going to be able to live up to but I just know that um, you know I've, I've been given a gift um, and to be chosen out of so many f folks to, uh, to, to represent um, such an amazing foundation um, it is an absolute blessing and uh, I, I couldn't think of a, a Boston icon uh, more fitting to represent than Pedro Martinez.